So hello everyone and uh, welcome to our session on uh, dream planters, drills and air seeders. And I'm here with uh, Mike Sr., Mike Jr. Balin at um, Oil Springs, Ontario. And we're going to talk about their system in terms of the planting equipment they have to be able to do no-till in their tough clay soils that aren't so tough after all the work that they've done to, to you know, make their system resilient. So uh, first off, maybe just talk a little bit about uh, where the farm came from in terms of the cropping system and where it is today and who's currently involved in the system. Uh, so um, we farm um, in the Oil Springs area with uh, heavy clay soils and uh, we work with a three crop rotation, corn, soybeans and wheat. Um, and it's myself, uh, my dad and my uncle that um, all farm together and work together. And the uh, crops and the soil types, you know, how do you manage those? I guess we talked about cover crops previously, Mike, and uh, how does that make cover cropping and, and the planting system work better or more challenging? Um, it's definitely a, uh, a another level of management, adding, adding the uh, cover crop into the system, I guess. Um, but it's, it's added um, more resilience to our soil um, and it's, you know, we, we use it to our benefit for that. And heavy clay soils, but uh, they're well tiled even though they're flat and stuff, correct? And how much does that improve your ability to do no-till? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, tile is, you know, we're not over, overly tiled here, but um, getting the water off the field in a hurry and you know our water infiltration because of the cover crops and the soil health um, definitely is key. And Mike Sr., can you just say when you got into no-till year-wise and when cover crops started to come into the system? It was back in 1991. Um, John Deere brought out a no-till drill to, for us to try. That was when they basically they were just starting out and uh, my dad thought that 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 was a no-brainer. That was, you know, get at it. And that was the way to do it. And then, you know, that was, we just kind of went on from there. So. And then when you, but you didn't start right away with cover crops. So they came in in sort of mid-2000s or? Yeah. 2014 or so yeah. or 15. And uh, it was just something we, well, it was starting to be more popular More here. popular. And uh, so we tried it and. You know, you work with it, and uh, it's it's a learning curve. Um, but you know, we worked with it. Did it make no-till easier or harder relative to the previous fifteen or twenty years that you'd been no-tilling without cover crops? Ground-wise, you know, like ground, ground-wise and the system. The system, well, it's an added, an added uh, something that you have to do. Uh, but it it's the benefits what are a lot more you can you notice it right within a couple of years you know you'll notice it and it yeah if it, if you can do it it it's uh, something to work with you know mike yeah um uh, like i said before i think i think it it definitely improved the soil condition mm -hmm. um adding the cover crops and it's but it's another level of management so in the spring, we have to manage um, wetter soils um, and residue and planting through that and working through that. But uh, yeah, it's it's definitely improved the soil for sure. And when you say improve the soil, Mike, are you talking about overall or overall and sort of in that spring to make it just a little bit more mellow for planting into, et cetera? Yeah, overall uh, water, like I said, water infiltration for sure. And then, yeah, uh, we we find that the soil is a lot mellower in the spring planting into, especially when we plant green into uh, a green cover crop. And planting green is an anomaly or it's sort of standard practice now? Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's standard, but it's something that we're working towards doing more of because uh, we like the benefit of it. And so your cover crops are essentially being terminated in the spring and how do you manage that? Yeah, so 
some will terminate over the winter, but the, the stuff that um, does survive the winter, we will um, terminate just before planting or at planting kind of thing, time frame. And then um, while it's still green, go in and plant. So, so you're not waiting for that to dry down. No. You're just, you've shut it down and now you're, okay, very good. <clears throat> so what planters do you have and what crops are they used for? So we have our, the, the original uh, 750 John Deere drill that from 91, that's been rebuilt quite a bit. Um, and it plants our soybeans, wheat, and cover crops right now on seven and a half inch rows. And this series was originally sort of developed to um, help people sort of walk through the system of, you know, challenging yourself on what it takes to decide that it's time for a new planter or to upgrade that planter or whatever. And you guys have equipment that you just bring through that shop and you're essentially keeping it new consistently. But, you know, what is it that you're looking at that's saying, okay, that major rehaul needs to happen? Well, luckily we have a good shop guy that can tear everything down and rebuild. But like the, the, the fundamentals of planting doesn't change much some years you know it's very easy to farm no-till you can like i i've said before like you could go out with a stick and make a trench and you know like it, it the ground is so mellow you know and and some and sometimes that you have to watch too because you, you could put the seed too deep or just because it's it's mellow people are surprised by that yeah they are you know they figure it should be like cement because you know till it shouldn't be like cement you know but it's not it's 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 yeah it's so much better but you know if you were going to build uh or buy a new planter or you know expand the size and stuff one of the other parts of the equation in terms of equipment and crop management that might have to change upgrading um to a different size a bigger size i don't think would be in our benefit you know you get heavy equipment i know that's you know it's it's going to be inevitable at, at at some point but we try to keep um a smaller footprint you know and how far away is your sort of radius from home to farm yeah we we don't have that far to go um if we do some custom work um like we do quite a bit of um it's a little bit more logistics but yeah it might be 15 miles yeah. radius or whatever, so. The planters that you have, planter and drill, for no-till, do you think that that is a different unit than what a conventional person would be looking at for a planter? I, I don't think anything different because, you know, the, the drill, that, that John Deere drill, um, essentially does the job in both conditions, you know. Um, as far as the corn planter goes, we ours is pretty pretty simple. Um, again, it can do the job in both conditions. I guess where I was going with that question is when you think back to sort of the the eighties and nineties when innovative farmers got started in that, the guys would take the planters, the six and eight row planters in the shop, and they keep adding mm -hmm. stuff to it every winter. But it seems now that with your mellowness, your resilience. We're actually trying to take stuff off the planters now. Is that making any sense? Yeah, like our corn planter is just a basic 7,000. It's an older one style, but it has no extras, you know, like it's just the bare planter. Because they're not needed. No. Um, the down pressure or it would be maybe good to keep it more up than down. And uh, so I don't know it. It'd be nice to be able to try that stuff. So let's talk about that a little bit. Because to me, when somebody's thinking about a planter, whether that's refurbishing or buying new, there's sort of the must-haves and the nice-to-haves. So what do you guys consider are the must-haves on a planter <laughs> that that mean it do does what you need it to do? Well, the must-have would be it's got to be have the basics, you know, sharp blades. All that stuff has to be working and functioning for even to make it worthwhile to put the other stuff on. And we thought about trying the, uh, or looking into the down pressure system. 
to Lee Kwong. So that's a nice <laughs> to have for you guys to look for in the future. Yep. And yep. would you consider that on the drill and the, the planter? No, it would be just on the planter, on the corn planter. Are there any other nice to have? There's all kinds of electronics out there and different things. You know, what types of things might might make the job a little bit easier or the just up the game? You always hear the horror stories, you know, like uh, the perfect planter is, you know, comes out of the shop and the way it goes, you know, it's, it's never that way, you know, like, uh, and the more stuff you have on it, I suppose, I, I, we don't know, but I, that becomes uh, almost one, a na nightmare. <laughs> yeah. One more thing to manage, yeah. but yeah, there, there's always the nice to have, but uh, at, at the end of the day, the, you still got to get off the planter to make sure that it's doing the job, right? And the core pieces are there. I think you said something extremely important, Mike, in terms of get off the tractor, because with the size of equipment today, that it, you know you can get so many acres planted so quickly compared to the old days yeah. that all of a sudden, oh, maybe I should not be out here planting because it's too wet or the seeds, something's not working yep. right. And I planted 100 acres. Maybe. My dad always said that years ago. He says, well, when you get to 150 acres, quit for the day because, you know, we don't want to be all right or all wrong. You know, like if it rained right after you planted, then you go out and do it again. So, Okay, so <clears throat> here's a couple of pictures of the corn planter. This is uh, planting in the 21 field down at the end of Aber Nathy or whatever the road's called. Um, just talk about the type of conditions that you're planting into, and then we'll sort of look at some pictures closer up of the planter itself. Yep, so that's that's um, not as green as we'd like, or as we as much green as we planted into. That was that's a little bit less than uh, what we've normally planted into, but again, it's the the soil conditions really nice there. And this sort of disappoints you a little bit. Uh, a little, of the green. yeah, a little bit. We'd we'd like a little bit more. Um, coverage there but that the fall determines that for us right so uh but nonetheless that's you know we're that's our basic uh planter with uh dry fertilizer and then um so two by two and then we put um liquid uh 28 and so just a single disc opener for dry fertilizer yep. for the two by two and then row cleaners how impactful are the road cleaners in the system we we don't even use them no we, it, we when we bought the corn planter they were on it so they're they're up we, we don't even use them we tried them one year and uh it was too much too much disturbance and so we just haven't taken them off but they're there and we don't use them and the back end uh yep so you can see that the uh uh liquid nitrogen is dribbled on top um of the row and then we have drag chains that can help um break up any any last little bit of lumps that we have and close up that seed trench and your closing wheels are a little more different than i would have expected yep so just because of how mellow it is um we like it one side crumbles it and then one side kind of uh, packs it up a little bit so we have a uh, crow foot types on one side and a spike on the other side and which one is engaging first are they happening at the exact same time the same time same time and then that chain you talk we're about. being aggressive with the chains we got two sets on yeah basically one and it makes that much difference yeah 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 it, dra it drags enough um even you know they they usually in uh planting greens system um they stay clean basically because that you know because it, it, they're dragging across uh green cover crop basically but it does it does gather enough loose soil and then the plant or the dill, drill you talked about is uh one of the original no-till drills from john deere 40 footer is that or 30 footer 30 foot 30 foot yeah mm -hmm. and uh talk a little bit about the conditions that it's used in and uh, <laughs> and what makes it work for you it's planted in every kind of condition that you can think of and it's worked um you know hard mellow yeah it doesn't matter it, it works well we planted into cover crop that was three feet high and 
you know, we had one year where we, we were a little bit, it, cover crop got a little bit tall and uh, it was a later spring because it was staying wet. And uh, we actually put a, a, we made up something to go on the front of it, like a, just a 10 inch tile, just to tip the, the cover crop over. Cause we were, we didn't, we hadn't experienced that part of it yet. And, but as far as after that, yeah, we had no problems. We just planned into it. And this green planting, whether on the drill or the planter, you've got relatively low uh, seeding rate of the cover crop and it's pretty much standing up. It's not laying over when you get through there with the planter. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's key. You want it still to be standing up. You don't want it to be laying down because it's going to keep any moisture. Okay, and so uh, no no dry fertilizer on this planter, and so you don't have any fertilizer. Just just talk about that setup there. So when we're planting wheat, we do have a liquid six twenty four six that we put with the uh, with the seed, um, and then you know we've been experimenting with some different stuff for the soybeans uh, liquid, but yeah, it's the basic, very basic drill setup from John Deere. Um, we did alter the the um, packing wheel, the closing wheel, we'll call it. Um, they are a smooth system and you can buy a whole bunch of other things, but we made our own notch system. It felt like it uh, worked a little bit better in the, in, the, in the clay system. The tires that we're looking at here, are they standard tires or that looks like an upgraded tire? Yeah, definitely upgraded that. Um, just a wider footprint, basically. Is it still a bias or is it a radial? It's a bias. bias yeah. 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 But it's uh, carrying, like it's spreading out the yeah. weight distribution. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. you're still, even though you're no till and that ground carries you a lot better than till ground, you're still conscious about compaction Absol in the system as a whole. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Again, you're going back in years because you've been able to carry these planters for so long. What was the game changers that? that puts you in the units that you've got. And I guess Mike Sr. with the with the drill, it was the newest thing at the time that was yeah. sort of revolutionary. Yeah, well, it was, it was, yeah, it was. And it was not that we were looking at it, you know, it was just an opportunity to try it on 50 acres. And uh, after doing 50 acres, you think, yeah, why, you know, this is, this is the way to go. So, so but, were you quite surprised by yes, this I was. Bulb yeah, moment? well, you know, everybody's the same. Uh, that'll never work. You know, that that was that's an old saying around this farm. That'll never work. And then somebody goes tries to prove it will, and but yeah, like I was a naysayer at the time, but after that, yeah, works. But and they're you know they've improved on all this stuff, and it's the newer stuff is yeah. It would be nice to see and watch it work. It, it is nice to watch. Neighbors have some nice stuff around and you watch it work and you, you know, it's, that's your wish list, you know, your Christmas time wish list. Mm -hmm. I look under the Christmas tree every year to see if it's <laughs> there, you know. But it, but it, you know, the reason we kept with it is it's simple mm -hmm. and it works like the, the basics of it uh, work for us and, and, and we've proven it out. Lots of times that that 750 drill can plant through anything, so yeah. and does a good job. What about with the corn planter? What was sort of the reason that that you bought that unit that you bought? Well, price, you know. Okay. That I mean, that let's be honest. That, yeah, that's, that's and it does the same job, you know. And if you get off and the conditions are the right where they're supposed to be, th that does just as good a job as. Um, the one with all the fancy stuff. So. So, so again, just trying to help people out, you know, where did things that you anticipated were going to work, not work sort of pitfalls that people might avoid in the, in their decision to change or refurbish or, or buy new. We know what works and yeah, we haven't changed, you know, we don't have the newest stuff, but we know what works and it's doing the same job. You know, we're getting the same yield. All that benefit is still there so it's really hard to make the switch to spend big dollars. big dollars yeah you could you could have the best of planners with all the toys and 
whistles on it. And, you know, if you, if you, the conditions aren't right, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter, you know, like, like soil or compaction or sidewall compaction and stuff like that. Like you got to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Right. And, you know, I understand like if you had 10,000 acres to do, you got to start sometime, you know, and go, but, um, you got to make it fit for your operation. Yeah. That's, that's it. But you're still like mother nature's playing the game and yeah. you got to play with her type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, any advice to others about, uh, replacing or refurbishing their equipment? Like you said, you brought that both those units in here every season. How important is that to maintaining the, the value of that equipment? Yeah, I think it's, it's probably number one. That's, you know, that's one of our first jobs in the winter is address the drill and the, in the planner. Cause it's the most important piece, you know? Um, and yeah, make sure that it gets what it needs. And, you know, the, like we said before, it, the old, the older stuff still works like it should, you know, like it, it always has. And even though our soils have changed conditions and gotten better, it still, it still does the job that it's got to do. So, but, but through hard work of keeping it up to date. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You always got to be aware or, you know, if there's something new coming out, don't just say no. Yeah. Like it, it, that might be the new thing, you know, like, so I keep an open mind and, you know, yeah. well, we're not afraid to try different attachments, you know, things like that. And, um, you talk about what's next. We'd like to see maybe the down pressure system on the corn planter might be beneficial only because it's the opposite. Our ground's not too hard at keeping it there. It's maybe too mellow. Which must surprise 90% yeah. <laughs> of the people that would watch a, a conversation with you guys like that. Yep. And so, and planting green kind of thing adds, adds another level. So we, you know, you want to make it consistent. So. How consistent is your emergence in, uh, in your planting systems? There's always room for improvement, I guess, but, uh, I, I, it's there. It's, it, we don't have an yeah. issue. So. Neat. Okay. Well, Mike and Mike, that brings us to the end of our conversation on the planters and drills. So I just want to say on behalf of those that will take the opportunity to watch the series, thanks very much for your interest and enthusiasm to share your experience with others. Thank you. Yeah.